Hello everybody, welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. In this film we look at landings. Unsurprisingly, landings require attention from pilots in all forms of aviation. As we saw in the takeoff film, most errors stem from a lack of plan, poor understanding of aircraft performance and perhaps the most significant factor, the lack of a well understood technique. And because your usual sortie is seemingly unchallenging, the focus is perhaps much lower than for this pilot. We all know the gyroplane is a very versatile and capable aircraft with the ability to perform very short landings. In fact gyroplanes can be landed virtually on the spot. But just because it can doesn't mean every approach must lead to a spot landing. Airfields afford rather a lot of space and at most you'll have to fit into the circuit pattern. So very slow, non-standard approaches or ones that weave around are potentially dangerous. Here we see a very odd and unstable approach to a lovely tarmac runway with over 1.2 kilometres available but ultimately makes a touchdown in the displaced threshold with both poor directional and pitch control. Fly the circuit pan accurately and with a planned airspeed, trim and look out of the window. This Cavalon pilot didn't trim once during his approach and is the only means of finding a consistent and repeatable technique. Over focus on a spot to land or self induced pressure and a sense that I'm a gyroplane pilot, this is how it's done, is one part of a serious problem that has seen three quarters of all gyroplane accidents in the last 10 years due to mishandled takeoffs and landings. Having flown a stable powered approach, you will round out to come level and float at around two feet. The nose needs to be pointing down or aligned with the runway center line, you do that with the pedals, whilst any drift is controlled with the stick. Once at two feet, the aim is to try and keep the aircraft flying level, which will require increasing backstick as it runs out of energy. Ultimately, it will touch down on the main wheels once flight is no longer possible. Ensure the throttle is closed, keep the stick back to use rotor drag and bring the aircraft to a stop. It is important that at touchdown, there is no remaining yaw nor side drift. Equally, rounding out high leads to a loss of airspeed and a heavy landing. Many students will have been introduced to landings after wheel balancing and hops. This method however leads to a tendency to balloon once moving on to landings from circuit height because the gyroplane has a different energy state at a different attitude. As you can see by this pilot trying to flare to land before the aircraft has run out of energy. Glide approaches make the round out harder work because of the steepness of approach leading to a larger transition a balloon, subsequent loss of airspeed and a big yaw change as the instructor adds power to cushion the second bite. Clearly with such instability a go around is the only option. Of course it's just down to timing and practice like any other approach but why make it harder work than it needs to be? This Calidus pilot demonstrates a nice two stage round out as he tries to better gauge the round out from a steep approach. Airmanship or threat and error management should see us adopt a technique that is the safest and easiest one to perform that still fits the objective. Be happy to be boring. Throwing your aircraft at the first few feet of an airfield just to prove you can is a poor trade. Finally, remember rotor thrust after landing. Bring the gyroplane fully to a stop before manoeuvring and monitor rotor RPMs. In a modern factory gyro the stick should be fully forward and central until the rotor RPM has decayed below around 150 and then deflect the stick into wind, that way you can be confident rotor thrust is no longer a factor. It stops this from happening. Fly safely.